Hey, what's up guys? <clears throat> Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video continuing on with the Brian Bosworth series of reviews and today I'm going to be talking about One Man's Justice, which is his first direct-to-video movie um, which would pretty much be the rest of Boz's career. Um, the only other theatrical movies that he appeared in um, were, of course, Three Kings, and uh, had a cameo in that, and then The Longest Yard, where he played one of the guards. But, of course, they were not starring roles. They were, again, uh, Longest Yard was a supporting role, and Three Kings was basically a cameo. But, again... Um, Stone Cold was um, was the only theatrical movie he did where he was the lead. Uh, every other movie that he did where he was the lead went straight to video like this movie. But this is a solid film, in my opinion. I would say that this is his second best movie next to Stone Cold. And again, this is definitely the best of the directed video movies that he did. And this is one that, again, like Stone Cold, used to come on FX frequently. I remember watching it um, a number of times on there and then picking this DVD up at the convenience store, um, one of the convenience stores around here. Um, I remember when they sold DVDs, I remember getting this and Legionnaire with Jean-Claude Van Damme there. Um, but yeah, I've had this DVD for quite a while, but... Yeah, again, FX, you should show this one quite a bit. And what's really cool about this movie, at least in my opinion, it's more of a, not like a martial arts movie, because Boz is obviously not a martial artist, but this movie has a lot more hand-to-hand -hand combat, a little bit of martial arts in it, which I thought was different. I mean, there is some gunplay, particularly in the ending of the movie. Um, but most of the the action scenes involving the Boz are, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat scenes, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, again, it's a lot different from not only Stone Cold, but other movies that he did where the action was more uh, based on uh, gunplay. So that's a really cool, interesting uh, feature, I guess is the appropriate word for this movie is it features more of a, of a, it's a more of a fighting film, you know, not, again, not necessarily a martial arts movie, because Boz is not a martial artist, um, but it's more of a hand-to-hand -hand combat fighting type, you know, for the hero, so again, I thought that was pretty cool, it's, it's different from, again, not only the previous movie, Stone Cold, but pretty much all the other movies that he did where he was the hero, were more based on gunplay than, you know, the hand-to-hand -hand stuff. So that definitely makes this movie stick out, in my opinion. Um, the story of the movie is really, really basic, really simple. Um, Boz plays a uh, army uh, drill sergeant and hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor. That's the first scene of the movie where, well, not the first scene of the movie, but one of the first scenes of the movie is he's, you know, training his guys in hand-to-hand -hand combat and also, you know, some drill sergeant stuff in there. And him and his wife, they're separated. His wife goes to pick up his daughter. They stop at this convenience store. Um, there's some corrupt soldiers that sell these, uh, you know, new weapons to the bad guys, who one of the bad guys is Jeff Kober, who I've always enjoyed no matter what kind of movie he's in uh, he's one of the villains in this movie and Jeff Coburn and his guys double cross the army dudes they kill them after the deal is done and Boz's daughter witnesses them get murdered um, so they go into the convenience store the cashier is actually MC Gainey who's been in a ton of movies over the years he only has a very brief part in this film he gets murdered right off um, his wife gets murdered, and then the cops show up to try to talk him down. Boz goes in, tries to save his daughter. Uh, his daughter gets shot, and then he gets shot, and he wakes up after eight weeks in a coma. And then his daughter is 
brain dead, so they take her off life support, so his daughter ends up dying because of this. Um, he starts to go after Jeff Cobra's character, but we find out that he is being protected by an FBI agent who is the lead villain, who's played by uh, Bruce Payne, who was the bad guy in Passenger 57. He was also in uh, Dungeons, both of the Dungeons and Dragons movies, which the first one was terrible, but I thought he did okay with. Um, what else was Bruce Payne in? I can't, I can't remember right now. What the hell else was he in? But Passenger 57 was the, the biggest movie that he was in, where he was, again, the villain in that. And, yeah, Jeff Cobra's being protected by him. Boz tries to go to find out why, and he starts to kind of get back at him. He sets him up. He finds out what's really going on, and he tries to stop these guys. And that's it. Again, it's a pretty, it's a pretty basic revenge movie. Um, you know, but I think what separates this film not only is Brian Bosworth, the star in it, um, but again, also the fact that it's more of a of a straightforward fighting and and hand to hand combat in the action scenes. Um, again, most of action movies either either one of two things they're either a shoot 'em up or a martial arts type film um and this movie again it's not i wouldn't consider it a martial arts film again boz is not a martial arts guy um i don't think he ever studied martial arts but in the movie it made him look like you know he was this hand-to-hand -hand combat expert and stuff which i thought was pretty cool and again, there is a little, from, from Boz, there's a little bit of gunplay at the end um, with him, but most of the, the gunplay stuff is the villains and some of the other characters. When Boz is doing his thing, when he's taking on the bad guys, most of it is hand-to-hand -hand combat, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, there's some, some really good fight scenes in this movie, very well choreographed again, uh, you know, I'm sure Boz did a little bit of training for this movie, but not to the extent of, you know, a Steven Seagal or a Van Damme or so on and so forth. Um, but, you know, he does look really good in the in the action scenes and they're well shot and, you know, old school like all these movies did. And, you know, and of course they can't, for whatever reason, they can't do it now. Um, but for old, you know, school movies like this, it's it's well done when it is done. And one of the, I don't, he's not credited on here, but this movie was actually done by two directors. Um, the original director is Kurt Wimmer, who's the guy that did uh, Equilibrium and then Ultraviolet, and then he stopped directing movies. But he's gone on to write a lot of movies. He wrote the fucking Point Break remake, which was stupid. Um, he's actually returning to directing. He's directing the new Children of the Corn remake, because that's what people want to see. But this was his first movie. Um, he got fired off of the movie, and Kurt Anderson took over. Now, Kurt Anderson, if you know old school, you know, 80s, 90s martial arts movies, Kurt Anderson uh, was a producer and directed a few of them. He did uh, Bounty Tracker with Lorenzo Lamas, Martial Law 2 with Jeff Wincott. Um, and he produced a lot of these old school martial arts movies. He stepped in and finished the movie. He doesn't get credit on it, um, but he was the one that you know directed most of the movie. And I don't know what the the issue was if you know Kurt Wimmer was going too slow or there were disagreements or whatever the case is. Again, this is an old artisan entertainment DVD. Luckily, it is in widescreen and it looks decent on DVD, unlike a lot of the ones that they put out. Um, Fright Night 2, amongst others. Um, this one actually looks decent on DVD, but I would definitely like to see this on Blu-ray. Um, you know, probably won't get any features, but again, it would be cool to see, you know, an interview with the Boz or a commentary and, you know, stuff like that. Um, again, probably won't happen, but, you know, um, I'd definitely like to see it for, for this. But, and yeah, why the directors changed and all that. But I mean, either or, the movie looks good. It's definitely, um, this one and Back in Business are definitely the best looking direct-to-video Boz movies. The other ones 
the budgets were obviously lower, so they don't, you know, they look like directed video movies. They don't look like a Stone Cold or this movie and stuff like that. But, you know, it looks good from a visual standpoint. I think that whoever, whatever scenes were directed by whatever person, I think overall the movie is competently directed. Um, and, you know, the script is good and, and stuff like that. And the cast is good. I thought Boz did really good with this role again i would definitely say that this is his best movie other than stone cold um i used to think back in business was but going back and watching this movie again to prepare for this review i would definitely put this one up above back in business again um not only does it look really well there is a good cast and for me at least my personal opinion the edge of this movie is again that most of the action scenes involving the hero is hand-to-hand -hand combat and fighting sequences. I thought, and and again, it's not a martial arts. It's very basic self-defense, street fighting type techniques that they do teach in the military. It's not, you know, karate or jujitsu. It's you know, okay, the knife, and I took the knife away, and that's it, and bang, you know, very basic stuff, which I enjoyed. Um, so that I would say is the edge. But I thought Boz did good. Um, again, like I said in the review for Stone Cold. I have always felt that Brian Bosworth is a good, capable actor. Obviously, the the superstar persona and the charisma and everything that he had as a football player transcended into his acting career, which, I again, I don't understand why he didn't have more theatrical lead roles. Uh, I know, again, Stone Cold flopped at the box office. Why I would like to know why it flopped at the box office were people just not tuned into it Did they not open the movie in bigger markets? Whatever the case was obviously I would like to know why it flopped But luckily and rightfully so in my opinion the movie has had a pretty damn good life after theaters through VHS and TV and now DVD and blu-ray uh, Stone Cold has had a very good afterlife, which is very nice. Um, but I thought Boz did well with this. He gets to kind of flex his acting muscles a little bit more in this movie, which was nice, dealing with the loss of his wife and his daughter and some of the more dramatic moments of the movie I do like. So I felt, you know, Boz did good with his, his character. Uh, Bruce Payne was great, as always, again, um most well known for the villain in Passenger 57 again some of the other films that he was in uh, both of the Dungeons and Dragons movies the first one was god awful I do remember seeing that movie when it first came out on VHS and I don't remember much of it and I believe that's a good thing um, but Bruce Payne oh, he was in Highlander Endgame he was the bad guy in that which He's one of the stronger Highlander villains, in my opinion, uh, right up there with uh, 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 Michael Ironside. I couldn't think of his name for a second. And Clancy Brown. And even Mario Van Peebles I did fine. I think the first four Highlander movies, they had good villains. The, the, other, the last Highlander movie, no. But I think Bruce Payne was one of the stronger villains in Highlander. And yeah, I couldn't think of the movie earlier, but now it just popped in my head. But I thought he did fine. He's got a mullet in this movie and a nose ring, so I thought he was cool. He's this renegade FBI agent who has Jeff Cobra do his dirty work, and he's trying to take out this crime lord so he can take over. But I thought Bruce Payne did well. He has a lot of rememberable dialogue. Like, he kills the one of the other side character's brother, and he goes, Are you aware? That it's illegal to drive while you're dead. And he's like, what? And he kills him. So Bruce Payne definitely had a lot of fun with this. And I would like, again, you know, I would like to see a Blu-ray of this movie and hear Bruce Payne's thoughts. What was it like working with the Boz? What was it like doing this character? Um, I thought he did well. Jeff Kober, again, another one of the villains in the film. Um, enjoyed, always enjoyed Jeff Kober's work, whether it's this um, he was in A Man Apart with Vin Diesel. I liked him in that movie. He was in Logan's War, the Chuck Norris made-for-TV film. Um, but Jeff Kober has been in a lot of stuff over the years, whether it's movies or TV shows. 
He usually plays a bad guy, but I've al always enjoyed his work. And in this movie, you know, he gets in trouble, but Bruce Payne puts him under, like, witness protection, basically, to get him to do all the, his dirty work. So, yeah. But I enjoyed his role, again, always liked him as an actor. The only gripe, I guess, people would have with this film is, spoiler alert, Boz doesn't kill him. Bruce Payne actually kills him. And then Boz kills Bruce Payne, which in a way I guess he is responsible for everything that happened. But, you know, I was, you know, under, especially when I first saw this movie, I was hoping that Boz would have killed him because he's the one that killed his wife and his daughter. Um, you know, but of course he doesn't, uh, Bruce Payne does, and then, you know, Boz kills Bruce Payne in a very cool way, which I'll get to. Um, there is a subplot in this movie where there's this young kid that's involved with Jeff Cobra's character. He's running drugs for him and Boz is trying to help him make right decisions because one of his buddies got killed by another kid and uh, Dewan Guy is the name of the kid. I thought he was fine. He wasn't annoying or over the top or anything like that. Um, I liked how they included this little subplot where, you know, Boz is trying to help this kid out. Um, MC Hammer is in the movie. Yes, the MC Hammer. He's not a villain, but he's kind of a bad guy. And he's the guy that uh, Bruce Payne is trying to take off the streets and he kills his brother and you know, sets him up and stuff like this, so, and the, the little parts that he was in, because he's not in the movie a whole lot, he's only in the movie for a couple of scenes, um, but the couple of scenes that he's in, I thought he did well and, and worked in there, so it was cool to see MC Hammer in, a, in another movie, because he's done some movies, again, he was, he had a cameo in Last Action Hero, which I always liked that cameo, deal's done, right, what, Slater 5, soundtrack, you know, I always, Again, Last Action Hero has a lot of cameos, but MC Hammer I always thought was one of the cooler ones because he actually got to talk to Arnold and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, MC Hammer I thought for the the small part that he had in this movie, I thought he did okay. You know, it was cool. Maybe you know it would have been cool to see more of him in this film, but you know maybe that's just the way that the script was written. But the action scenes are fine. Again. The beginning when uh, Boz is training his guys and, and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. Um, there is some fight scenes in this movie. He goes in a tattoo shop because Jeff Cobra has a, a tattoo on his neck. And um, one of the guy that runs the tattoo shop is actually uh, Robert Lasardo, who's been in a ton of movies. He was in uh, Hard to Kill. With Steven Seagal, he was the guy with the knife in the beginning in the liquor store. He was also in Out for Justice. He was one of Richie's guys. He was also in uh, In Hell with Jean-Claude Van Damme. He was one of the prisoners. He was in Tiger Heart where he was one of the villains. But Robert Lasardo, if you've seen him, you know who he is. Um, he's been in a bunch of movies and TV shows over the years. Um, and Boz goes in and fights these guys that are giving him a hard time. There's another fight scene where he's trying to get guns from this gang, and that's where this shot comes from on the back, where he meets him at this place, and he calls 911. He's like, I need five ambulances right now, and he fights all these dudes and fucks them up, which I thought was cool. Um, the two like henchmen for Bruce Payne's character, the Asian guy is Leo Lee, who's been, again, you've seen him before. He's been in a lot of movies and TV shows over the years. Um, he fights them, some good little fisticuffs. Um, the ending was cool where Bruce Payne and him are fighting on a roof and then he throws him over the roof and he falls down this building and crashes onto a piano and dies, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, there's some, some good fisticuffs, good fight scenes. Again, the choreography and it looks good in the movie. And again, for someone that's not a martial artist like Boz, I'm sure, again, he did a little bit of training for the film, but it looked really good. And, and again, the, the camera angles and, and the way that they filmed it, I thought was, was really well done. Um, there's another little bit where he steals a cop motorcycle and they're chasing after him. So that was pretty cool to see again, kind of a little bit of a call back to Stone Cold with the motorcycle stuff. I'm like, oh, okay. I always did like that little bit of the film. Um, and I believe I hit all the action scenes 
yeah, I did hit all the the action scenes in here. Um, the movie's not like chock full of action. It's not like a Stone Cold, um, but you know the action that is in here is well done. And again, there's a little little more dialogue for Boz to work with, a little bit of an opportunity to do for him to do a little more acting, which is nice. And the fact that he is surrounded by a good supporting cast, much like Stone Cold. Um, you know, it, it gave him the opportunities to look better, you know, which was, again, which is the, the idea, the goal of your supporting cast is to make the actor, the star look good. And this movie definitely does that on that level and other levels as well. Um, but at the end of the day, I would say that this movie is definitely Boz's best directed video film. Even the poster is really cool, you know, with the American flag and he's looking badass with a gun. Um, this movie was called One Tough Bastard, but they changed the title uh, overseas. It is still called that some places. And this was a HBO premiere back in the day. Now, back in the day, um, in addition to like the big time theatrical movies that HBO would run like on Saturday nights, like the HBO movie of the week or whatever, they would also show what was called HBO premieres, which were a lot of these uh, directed video movies before they came out on video would air on HBO and it would be like this big thing and like yeah HBO premiere this week and stuff like that like again a lot of the Don the Dragon Wilson movies were shown there a bunch of the Lorenzo Lamas movies like again a lot of these directed video action films were first shown as HBO premieres back in the day before they went to VHS Stone Cold was actually one as well um, even though Stone Cold had already come out on VHS and stuff, it was still a HBO premiere, I guess, to, you know, get more people to watch the movie or such. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, this one is a very solid movie. Really enjoy it. Again, I would say this is definitely Boz's best directed video film. And for the fact that it's unique in the way that it's not a run-and-gun type movie, it's not a martial arts film, but it's... From the hero, it's mostly hand-to-hand -hand combat, fight scenes, which was nice. Um, so in that, in, in my opinion, that's what gives this movie the edge. And it definitely looks the best out of his direct -to video films, this one and Back in Business. So they actually put some money into the look of the film and made it look like a theatrical film. Um, but yeah, also would love to see a Blu-ray of this one day just to see it in HD. Some features would be nice, but hey... A guy can dream, can he? But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of One Man's Justice. Next, I'm going to review another Boz movie that I actually enjoy, and that is called Blackout or Midnight Heat. In some parts of the world, it's called Midnight Heat. Um, but until then, uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.